Fanny McDaniel and welcome to Tucker Hill. This is a strawberry plant. It's actually one that I had last season that I brought inside over the winter. And you can see right now it's dormant. That means it's not producing any fruit. However, I'm going to take this and repot it. I'm actually probably going to just put it in my new raised beds that I built uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to I'm going to take these and they're individual plants. I don't know if you can see them, but they're individual little plantings in here. And when you plant them, you should always put them about 12 to 18 inches apart. If they're in a pot, that's very different. But if you're going to put them in the ground or if you're going to put them in a raised bed, which is what I'm going to do, you plant them uh, 12 to 18 inches apart. And you want to make sure that you give them some good compost as well as organic matter. Now, I like to use um, leaf mulch. This strawberry plants and vegetable plants in general love, love leaf, uh, leaf mulch. It's very high in nutrients, and I normally add that in with my soil to give my flowers and my vegetables a nice boost. So I'm going to take these and replant them, and we're going to have strawberries that will look very much like these. So what are, let's talk about strawberries and, and why they're really good fruit to have. First of all, they're very, very low in calories. This is about four calories here. So you can eat a nice big bowl of these and before you do any damage, you'll be tired of eating them. <laughs> so you can also take them and use them in salads. I will use them very often in a green salad because it gives it a nice little note as well as dessert, which is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to be making my uh, a recipe from my, my Farm Girl in the City of Food and Love cookbook. And it is the recipe for my Sweetie's Strawberry Shortcake. Many of you have heard me speak of Sweetie. She was my mother-in-law, and this is one of her one of her special recipes that we used to, she used to make all the time. So we're gonna be making that today. So let's talk about uh, some of the other good things about strawberries. First of all, they're very rich in vitamin C and potassium. I mentioned um, also is mag manganese, it's very high in that, um, as well as vitamin A. So it's a really good fruit to have as a go-to. Children love them. I know when my kids were small, they would actually go and pick them right off of the vines and eat them just like this. I don't use any chemicals, so no harm done there. So we're gonna be making that strawberry shortcake today, and I'm gonna take this and put it to the side. Let me give my hands a quick little washing so that we can get started with the recipe, and I will be right back. Okay, so we're going to get started. I have all of my ingredients here. And let's go over what's going to go in the strawberry shortcake. First of all, you're going to need two and one half cups of AP flour, all purpose flour, meaning that it has no salt, nor does it have any baking uh, powder in it. So we're going to do two and a half cups of that, two and one and one half cup, I'm sorry, one and one half tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, one stick of unsalted butter, so this is actually one half cup of unsalted butter, three quarters cup of whole milk, one half cup of granulated, um, organic granulated uh, sugar, and you can see that I have the granulated sugar here, as well as for the whipped topping, you're going to need another half cup of that sugar as well. And here's my secret ingredient. I love rose water, and this is going to go into the strawberries. So before you get started, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. And again, depending on how your oven heats up, you may have to you know, monitor and make sure that it doesn't burn because some ovens heat very high. This is a commercial oven that I have, so it cooks things off pretty pretty quickly. And so 15 to 20 minutes and the shortcakes are done. So make sure you pay attention to that. So before you get started, you're gonna take 
your strawberries. And I've cut up about two cups of strawberries, special strawberries here. I went ahead and did that. And to that, you're going to add your half cup of sugar. I'm going to give that a stir. And then you're going to take just a little bit of rose water and add that. And you only need about three drops because this is very, very strong, but it gives an amazing note to, um, to your dishes. And I normally use this in uh, lemonade or I'll use it in my peach cobbler and obviously in my strawberry shortcake. So you give that a nice little stir. And what this is going to do is it's, it's going to start to produce a nice juicy juice. So give that a stir. Make sure you mix it in real well. And then you're going to set this off to the side and we're going to come back to that once we get our, sh our short shortcakes made off. Okay, so first you're going to take your flour and you can dump that right into your sifter. You're going to add your baking powder and your salt. And once you add that, you're going to give this a nice little set into a large bowl. And then you're going to take your butter and cut it up into small pieces like I'm doing here and add this to your dough, or rather to your flour. Now this is a very, very easy recipe. It doesn't take that long to make. And you can actually make your shortcakes ahead of time, like a day ahead of time if you're planning to entertain. And then the next day, you can just add your toppings, and you are ready for dessert. So you're gonna take this and using a pastry blender, you're gonna take this and cut your butter into the flour. Now some people will use a fork to do this, but uh, I find that a pastry blender works better. Some people will also use their food processor. I don't like the food processor because when you're working with things, especially like uh, shortcakes, you don't want the flour to bind together too much. Actually, you, you want it to stay pretty loose. So I like a pastry blender. You know what? It's good for your arms, too. So you get a little exercise without even trying. And you're going to toss that until and mix it in until it starts to look like little peas. And once that is done, you're then going to take your milk and you're going to mix it in and give it a toss. You don't, again, you, you're not going to be mixing per se, but a, rather a nice to uh, toss just to make sure you get everything moistened so that it binds together. The thing about working with a recipe like this is you don't want your recipe to produce any gluten, and that's what happens if you are moving it too much and working the dough too much. So you want to take this and gently toss it around in the bowl like so. Give it a toss and make sure all of your ingredients are nice and moist. But again, not to work that dough too much, just enough to moisten it like I'm doing here. And once you're certain all of it's nice and moist, which I think this is, go to this side of the way. You're then going to dust your cutting board with a little flour. And then you're going to turn this 
the dough onto the onto your board like I'm doing here and then take your hands and flour them just a little bit because you don't want them to stick together and then gently press your dough to kind of bind it together just a little bit just enough so that it holds together And again, don't overwork. Although I'm moving this a little bit, I'm not overworking it. I'm just doing it just enough to make certain that everything binds together nicely. It's a really soft dough and it makes a beautiful, beautiful shortcake. Now I know there are cakes, actual cakes that are also strawberry shortcakes. This is a, an old fashioned strawberry shortcake that, again, I got this from my sweetie who used to make these. And you know, you can take this shortcake and use it with other fruit as well. You can use it with blueberries or raspberries. It's not necessary that you just relegate it to just strawberries, but you can kind of get creative and do with it what you like. Okay. I'm going to move this over just a little bit so I can pull over my baking sheet. You're going to take a baking sheet like I have here. You're going to line it with a piece of parchment. And you're going to pat the dough. You're not going to take a rolling pin and roll this out because again you don't want to overwork this dough, uh, this dough. Gonna pat that out just a little bit. And then you're going to take your cookie cutter, make sure you flour it like I'm doing here, so that you can then cut your shortcakes. And this is the thickness you want them. You see how thick that is? It looks like a nice big old biscuit. <laughs> so you're going to take that and you're going to cut that one. And you can also, um, I would recommend not doubling this recipe. You could, but I have done it before. Normally I'll just do separate recipes if I want to make um, a larger batch. This is going to give you uh, anywhere from four to five nice biscuits or shortcakes. I got biscuits on the mine. <laughs> okay, this is almost done. And actually, we're going to get four out of this one. And if you have a small family like my husband and myself, although we're not eating this right now, my neighbors are going to get blessed with this because we don't need the calories at this moment. So we're going to take this and go ahead and cut this last one out. And there's always a little runt that you can take and test. This is the runt here. So we're going to go ahead and bake them off anyway. I don't like to waste. This could be a nice little shortcake for breakfast with my husband in the morning. He'll bake up enough so he can have this and some fruit and whatever else he wants when I'm not watching. <laughs> Poor guy. I feed him though. I feed him on Sundays. You know, he gets whatever he wants. So he shouldn't be complaining. Listen, I'm going to pop off for just a second because I need to get an egg wash, which I forgot. You guys know that I bake things off ahead of time, so this was actually an egg wash from the batch that I made up on yesterday in preparation for today. So once you do that, you're going to take the egg and give it a nice little beat, and then you're going to just brush the tops of the shortcakes with the egg wash. 
This is going to give it a nice, nice finish. And you just lightly brush just the tops of your shirt case. And once you do that, you're going to bake them off again for about 15 to 20 minutes in a 425 degree oven. Let's get this last one here. I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the oven. And then the next thing that we're going to do, clean this up just a little bit. I want to show you this cute little dish towel or dishcloth. Actually, one of my followers, her name is Berlin Tarleton, she actually crocheted these. So I've been testing these in my, um, in my kitchen and I absolutely love these because they're very absorbent. They're 100% cotton and I kind of like it. So maybe we'll be talking about this again later. But um, anyway, once you do that, you're then going to go ahead and we're going to take our whipped cream because the next thing we're going to do is assemble these. We're going to take our whipped cream and you need about three quarters of a cup of whipping cream. And you want to make sure it's nice and cold. You're going to take that and add your sugar. And I don't like mine really sweet in my cookbook. I talked about half a cup of sugar and you can do it however you like. You can also use a, a um, sand mixer to make the whipped cream, but I'm going to show you how to do it without the mix. This only takes a couple of minutes. You whip this and this is going to be added. Maybe one more. 
one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to whip it till it becomes butter. You want it to have nice little soft peaks like that. And then I'm going to step off camera for just one more second. Now these are shortcakes that I baked off earlier. You can see them here. And what we're now going to do is we're going to put the shortcakes together. Let's see, I think I'll do it that way that way you can see what it is I'm doing. And to assemble them, you just take your, take a knife, and you split them like so. And you're going to take them. I'm putting this on this, this really pretty dish, one that I really, really like, uh, because it presents nicely. I'm just going to do two, so you can see how we put them together. Okay. And then you're going to take your strawberries. Oh, this is nice. You see it's already all that nice juice. And the longer you let it sit, the more juice you're going to get. As you can see, isn't that pretty? And we're going to take this now and assemble our shortcakes. This is really, really easy. And if it's a little messy and you're putting it on individual um, dishes, it's fine. It's even nicer. So you put about maybe two tablespoons per shortcake. I'm being a little messy here, but messy is good, right? <laughs> and you take that and you're going to take your, there's one, and there's the second one. And if you're putting it on an individual dish, you can just add some strawberries around like that. Because it looks pretty. And the recipe is pretty much done. You're going to take a little bit of whipped cream and put it like so. And there you have it. How good is that? You know, when I think about this recipe, it really does take me back home because I can think about the springtime, I can think about all of the many, many hours I spent in the kitchen watching either Sweetie or other members of my family make recipes. And especially during a time like this, it, it kind of gives me that comfort that I, I think so many of us are needing right now. So if for no other reason than to just make some great memories for yourself and your family, get in the kitchen, get in that garden, and see what you can grow and cook up. This has been Bonnie McDaniel, and I will see you next time, and we'll be we'll see what we can come up with for another great recipe. And make sure you tell someone you love them today.